Hello everyone, I hope that you're doing well and welcome to the tutorial recording session. Now, you must have seen the announcements that I have canceled the class for the tutorial session just because there is a planned power outage for a portion of the Nanny area due to, due to some fire incident. Uh, now the fire incident actually incurred sometimes back last week and just because of that, so EFL is actually has, they have put up a planned outage so that they could fix up the lines. So just because of that, my area is affected. So therefore, uh, come tomorrow early in the morning from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., I will not ha be having any power supply. So I thought to just go a bit ahead of things and get this version recorded so that you may not be affected in any particular way. So welcome to the tutorial recorded session. I hope that you, all of you are doing well. Also at the very same time, I hope that you are keeping yourself up to date with all the coverages so far. Now, just quick reminders, mid semester exam is next week. And this is your layout. Please do go and have a look and ensure to prepare yourselves very, very well. Now for week six, we have already gone over our lecture recording, uh, sorry, the lecture class, which is posted on Moodle. Please do go feel free to have a look at the recording just in case if you have missed on to the class. Those of you who attended, thank you for your commitment. Moreover, also go and start attempting your lecture notes from week one all the way down to week six. Now, for your mid semester exam, I think I've mentioned this in the lecture class and I will mention it yet again. I am testing all the way from week one to week six, including your lecture quizzes. So just in case if you're not attempting your quizzes, you would want to attempt your lecture quiz before you start with your mid semester exam. Okay, so please ensure to do so. Now, let's quickly hop in uh, to our tutorial. Okay, now uh, also please ensure if you have any questions or queries, you're most welcome to drop me an email and I'm most happy to assist you where possible. So we have matching and short answer questions. Now I will, it will be it will be very silly for me to dictate the short answer questions in a recording. So what I will do is I will release the short answer questions. Sorry, the short uh, answer, so short answer questions, the sample answers directly underneath the tutorial recording. So you can have a look at it and then try to understand. Should you have any questions or queries, feel free to drop me a message on Moodle or send me an email. So we will go over matching questions. And after that, we will also have to go over our Gantt chart lab. Okay, so we will go through them. So first of all, matching question. All right, so in your matching question, it says identify the letter of the choice that match matches the phrase or definition. So you have class diagram followed by is tools, lifeline, object relationship diagram, state transition diagram, activity diagram, object modeling, black box, UML, and system boundary. And then you have to use this words to match it up against the sentences which are provided from number one to 10. Now, does not want or need outside interference. So, Number one, the correct answer is H, black box. Number two, shows objects and how they interact to perform business functions and transactions is D, object relationship diagram. Number three, this is mainly used to support object-oriented system analysis and develop object models, I, U, M, L. After you identify this, you place the use cases on the diagram and act and add the actors and show the relationships. The correct answer there is J, system boundary. In this, lines show relationships between classes and have labels identifying the action that relates the two classes. Class diagram, A. In a sequence diagram, an X marks the end of this lifeline, which is C. Seven, in this, 
reading from left to right, the line shows direction and describe the action or event that causes a transition from one state to the other. So it shows a transition. So definitely state transition diagram, it's E. Number eight shows the order in which the actions take place and identify the outcomes. Order and then outcomes, activity diagram, F. Number nine. Identify consistency and provide common links so that once objects are described and used in one part of the design, they can be reused multiple times without further effort. Case tools, which is B, requires many types of diagrams to represent the proposed system. Object modeling, which is G. So let me repeat the answers. Number one, the correct answer is black box H. Number two is object relationship diagram, which is D. Number three is UML, which is I. Number four is system boundary, which is J. Number five, class diagram, which is A. Number six, lifeline is C. Number seven, state transition diagram, which is E. Number eight, activity diagram, which is F. Number nine is case tools, B. Number 10 is object modeling, that's G. Now, like mentioned earlier, okay, so the short answer questions, the simple answers, I will be putting it right beneath the tutorial recording. So please do feel free to have them look. I'll try to include as uh, detailed as possible so that you are able to get good, good grasping understanding on this. Now, next up, what we can do next is this, or what I want you, us to do it is to work on the Gantt chart lab. Now, Gantt chart would play a very good, uh, very big part in your project that you will be doing. With the use of Gantt chart, what you do is you show scheduling of the project. Now, how do you do it? So you are supposed to match the activity with the duration and with the start date and have a end date. So how do we go around doing that? Okay, that is pretty simple. Now, if you look at the table which is given, so you have activity from A to H. With it, you have the predecessors from A to G. Okay, and then you have duration and the start date is on the 2nd of July. And this is where we will list down our activities. So let's go and list them now. You have activity A, pardon me for this. So you have activity A and you have activity B, activity C, activity D, activity E, activity F, activity G and activity H. Now, in your projects or in real life terms, you do not have activity A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, but instead you have activity names, the real names of the activities. Now you'll notice that your activity starts on the should be start date on the 2nd of July. Over here you'll have a finish date as well. Now nowhere in this question it states that you have a five day as a working day or seven days as a working day. If it indicates that it's five days per week of working days, then you will use it as like that. If it doesn't state, so generally you'll end up using seven days. So it starts on the 2nd of July. So that means the finish date is going to be, so plus three. Now, so what will be the finish date? So it starts from the 2nd, so 2nd is included. Second, third, and fourth. That means it finishes on the 4th of July. Now you'll notice that O minus two gives you two. Now please do note that it starts on the second. So you'll have to include second as well. Second is inclusive. Second, third, and fourth gives you three days. So your next activity starts on the 5th of July. Now your activity on the 5th of July basically has a duration of four days. 
05 July 21 has four days. So you'll take in fifth plus four. So inclusive of fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. So just do it like this. Five plus four gives you nine to do a minus one. It will give you the value. So eighth of July 21. Thereafter, you have your next start date would read as the 9th of July. And it takes two days, so 9th and 10th. So 9 plus 2 gives you 11, minus 1 will give you 10. So 10th of July 21. Now, your next start date is going to be on the 11th of July. Now, something went wrong. What went wrong? This is incorrect. Why this is incorrect is this. Look at the predecessor. That means the activity C is dependent on activity A. So your finish date is on the 5th, so over on the 4th of July. So the activity C will also start on the 5th of July. Pardon me for that. And then it takes two days to finish. So five plus two, seven minus one gives you value of six, six of July, 21. Our next up activity D has a predecessor of B. So B finishes on the 8th of July. So this would be the 9th of July, 21. And it takes five days. So nine plus five gives you a value of 14 minus one gives you 13, so 13th of July, 21. Activity E, the predecessor is C. So activity C finishes on the 6th of July. So this starts on the 7th of July. Now, why 7th? Why not 6th? Because the activity finishes, activity C finishes on the 6th. So you will start on the following day, which is 7th. Now, how many days did it take to finish? One day. So what will be the date? It will be 7th of July. So seven plus one gives you eight, eight minus one will give you seven. So 7th of July, one day. Now activity F as a predecessor of activity C, activity C finishes on the sixth. So over here, you'll also have your start date as the 7th of July. It's two days, seven plus two is nine minus one gives you eight. So 8th of July, 21. Next up, you have activity G. Now, Activity G is dependent on both activity D and E. So you have D and E. So which one would you take in? 7th of July or 13th? You will take in the value 13th of July unless and until both of them are completed, only then you will proceed. So over here, it is 13th of July, and then 21. So it takes four days, so 13 plus four is 17, minus one would give you 16, 16th of July, 21. After that, you have activity H. So activity H is dependent on F and G, so F and G, okay? And if you look at finish date, one finishes on the 16th of July and the other one finishes on the 8th. So you'll have to again reconsider that unless and until both the activities are completed, you cannot proceed. So therefore, this will be 16th of July, 21, plus three, 19 minus one will give you 18th of July. So this is your duration date. So now, bearing this into consideration, you will have to match this accordingly. How do we go around doing this? Now I'm going to place this and center align it, and then I'll start. Activity A starts on the second and finishes on the fourth. Notice this one, two, and three, three days. So I will go and simply apply a color to it, orange. Let's apply different colors for different activities. Now, activity B starts on the 5th and finishes on the 8th. So how many days? 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's apply a different color this time. Let's apply a black. 
Now, equity C starts on the fifth as well and finishes on the sixth. So that takes only one, only that takes two days to finish. So let's put a lighter blue. Activity D starts on the ninth and then finishes on the 13th. There you go. Now, activity E starts on the seventh and then finishes on the seventh as well. Starts on the seventh and finishes on the seventh. So that's just for a day. Now is that? Okay. Activity F starts on the seventh and then finishes on the eighth. So that means duration is two days. So I will go and allocate a different color for this. Activity G starts on the 13th and finishes on the 16th. Do notice that we do not have 16 over here. So you can always highlight two or three cells and then you'll have the numbers coming in and look at the last date, which is the 18th of July. So let's drag it all the way to the 18th, which is here. Now, good to go. I can decrease the size of my page a bit so that I can see all the values. So let me just get a table lining for those. All right. Okay, so activity F, we've done activity G, starts on the 13th and finishes on the 16th, four days. So with that is you have this. And then activity H, starts on the 16th and then finishes on the 18th. Now with that done, what you can do is you can have all these something like that and your dates can be a bit bold and underlined and that finishes up your Gantt chart. Sometimes, or if you'd like to, it's not compulsory. What I also prefer to do is I can have this merged and activity A. I can have this merged and this is activity B. Activity B is not showing here because of the color. So I will make it white. I will merge this and have this labeled as activity C. I will go and merge this and activate Sorry, this is not activity B, pardon me. Oh yeah, it is activity B. So this is activity D, merge this and write down activity D. This is activity E, so I will just write it down E and then ensure that this is center aligned. Finally, activity F and activity G, merged and this is G and then Activity H, merged H. So this is how it's going to be. If you'd like to, you can have it something like this or even just this will do. So this is a simple Gantt chart which you could draw and you could make out with. Now, generally, if, if like in your project, you are supposed to come up with the activities. Now, how do you determine the activities? You'll have to learn how websites are generally designed and generally done. Based on that, you can list on the activities and determine the predecessors duration. This could be approximate figures, start date and finish date. All right, so this is an again chart. Now, if you have any questions or any queries in regards to this, please feel free to drop me a message or model, or you can always drop me an email. Let's look at another example. Now, this time, you don't have most of the things available like you had it here. So we'll go around working on it. So over here, you have finish date or end date, whatever you'd like to state it down as, okay? Let's give it a bit of space and let's go around making this in a tabular format. So you'll have your, I label this as scan chart and then date. So start date is 01 Jan 22. All right, now let's go and figure it out. So start is the first of Jan. So the finish date is going to be 
1 plus 4 gives you 5 minus 1, which is the 4th of Jan 22. After that, you'll see that activity 2, the predecessor is 1, takes 5 days. And it doesn't say whether 5 working days or 5 or 7 days as working days. So if it doesn't say, you'll consider all days as working days. Okay. So start with, this is finished at 4th, so start with 5th, 5th of Jan 22. And 5 plus 5 gives you a value of 10, minus 1 will give you a value of 9. So 9 Jan 22. Now, your activity 3 is also dependent on activity 1, which is formulate idea. So therefore, I do notice this activity is listed here and this is the number for the activities. So activity one is formulate idea. So it finished on the fourth. So therefore the starting date is going to the 5th of Jan 22. And then it will take five days. So five plus five gives you 10 minus one gives you nine. Now choose designer. Now choosing a designer has a predecessor of two and three. This is two, this is three. Surprisingly, both of the dates that those activities finishes is the same. So therefore, 10 Jan 22 takes how many days? Two days. So 10 minus two, so 10 plus two gives you a value of 12. 12 minus one gives you 11. So therefore, 11 Jan 22. Logical design, activity five, the predecessor is activity four. So this finished on the 11th. So that means you will end up starting up the activity on the 12th of Jan. So duration is seven days. So 12, seven gives you a value of 19. 19 minus one will give you a value of 18. So 18 Jan 22. Your next activity is six, whereby the predecessor is five. So finished on the 18th, you'll start off on the 19th of Jan. And 19 plus two gives you a value of 21 minus one, 20. Now build website so the activities is it dependent on is on activity five and activity six both of them together so 20 gen is the greater value out of these two figures so the next date is going to be 21st of jan 22 takes 20 days now you will not do 20 plus 20, uh, 21 plus 20 here why because your days is only till 31st so this is what you can do. Now, if you get very confused on this, so you'll do 21 plus 10 gives you a value of 21. So remainder is 10, right? So from the 1st of February, you'll start adding in another 10, right? So first, we'll reduce one value. Okay, so first, uh, so one plus, so zero, not one, but zero, you'll do zero plus 10 gives you a value of 10. So 10 minus one is the ninth of Feb. Now, what we can do is we can always go and cross check if we have made any errors. You can always go onto your calendar since it's 2022. So you have 21st of Jan. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 9th of Feb. Okay, how did I calculate this? Let's do it once more. So you have 21st of Jan. And then plus 10 gives you a value of 31st Jan. And then you have a remainder of 10 days. 
pardon me. So you have a remainder of 10 days. Now, after that, what you'll do is you'll take in a value of zero and add and y zero. We're not taking one, we're taking zero. Okay, so zero of fab plus 10 gives you 10th of fab. Now we've been subtracting one, remember? So minus one give you ninth of fab. Now, if this confuses you, if you're not able to mathematically think this out, so what you can do is you can always use a calendar and sort the date out. Fair enough. Now, also do consider in Feb 2021, it's not a leap year. You do not have 29 days. Okay, so we need to consider that we have to uh, consider that we have 29, 28 days in February. Okay, now, this website, the predecessor is seven, finishes on the 9th, so you'll start on the 10th of Feb 21. Plus five is 15 minus one, 14. So 14 fab 21. Over here, your next date is going to be 15th of fab. Now do notice the predecessor is eight, which is test website, which is here. So 14th starts on the 15th of fab 22. Pardon me, this needs to be 22 and not 21. Now, 15 plus 2 gives a value of 17 minus 1, 16. So 16th of Feb, 22. 10 is go live with this size 9. So 16th was the date on the previous one. So over here, it will be 17th of Feb, 22. Takes one day. So 17 plus 1, 18. 18 minus 1 gives you a value of 17 again. The 17th of Feb 22. So that becomes your official start and finish date. Now your Gantt chart, what you're going to do next is you have the first of Gen selected, you can put it across and go all the way to 17th of Feb. good now when you have something like this that means your cell is too small for it to occupy the values so you can double click for your auto fit feature i hope you remember auto fit from cn 501 yes i did teach you cn 501 i took almost all of your cn 501 so the line between the click auto fit so use the auto fit feature to extend the size automatically, okay? All right, let's get on with it. I will make this bit more smaller so that I'm able to view it. Now, let's put in chart, let's put is again chart somewhere on top like this and all of the dates let's cut it off and put somewhere on top so that it becomes in line okay so first of gen to okay what went wrong first of gen oh no this is correct is this correct? So one plus four gives you five, minus one gives you four. Okay, yeah, that's fine. All right, so nothing is wrong, all is well. So I will go and make the entire thing bold and underlined. There you go. So formulate idea is from first to fourth. And you let's go and pick a color for it. There you go, same time. What I will do is I will merge and center and type down formulate idea. Now, what we can do is let's choose a consistent color all throughout since you are putting in the names for those bars. So let's work on consistent. 
color. Let's work on a consistent color. Eh? Uh, next one is find necessary resources from the fifth all the way to the ninth. So I will merge this and apply the color. And at the same time, we'll click on the bar and I will write down find necessary resources. After that, advertise is also similar to the activity two from the fifth till the ninth. So I will highlight that, merge it up, double click and tap down advertise. After that, it's activity four, which is choose designer from the 10th till 11th. So merge color. And then double click, choose designer. Next up is five logical design from the 12th and then all the way to 18th. It's 18th, yeah, it is 18th. So light up, merge, and it's called logical design. Now, after that, activity eight is check design 19 till 20. So 19 till 20, merge it up, collide up, we'll click and you'll write down check design. And that works pretty well. After that, build website. It's on the 25th, 21st of Jan till the 9th of Feb. 21st of Jan till the 9th of Feb, which is somewhere over here. There you go. Now, how do I select this? Select 21st. Select, choose a place where to select and hold the shift button and click. 21st till the 9th, just in case if you have gone up and down, you can always go and readjust. So color, then build a website. So I double click, build website. After that, next is test website, which is from the 10th to the 14th. So from 10th, all the way till 14th is select the color, merge, and then you have test website. Alrighty, looks good. And then fix errors, which is from the 15th till the 16th. 15th till the 16th, merge it up, fix errors, and finally go live, which is one day from the 17th till the 17th, and you will go and select that. You don't need to merge it, okay? Even if you click on merge, you won't see much changes. Go live. So that's our gain chart. Now what I can do is I could go around and I could go around and fancy it up a bit, select this, and then we have two thick borders to it. Okay, here. There you go. Finally, I also I also did for the rest of them. I'm just selecting the bar. Since it's merged, you will select the entire bar of its own. And then Click on border, thick outside border. Select thick outside border. Again, fix errors, home tab, phone group, thick outside border, go live, home tab, phone group, thick outside border. And that is our gain chart for this particular project. Now, this is how it actually looks, okay? 
So based on this, you actually go and determine what is your start date, what is your finish date, and how things will be aligned. More if you notice this, you'll see that these two activities run together. The predecessor is formally idea. Choose designer, the predecessors are these two since they are in line. Logical design, the predecessor is choose designer. For checking the design, the predecessor is logical design. And so forth. So this is on GAN chart. Now, what I'd like you to do is, I'd like you to place this up on Moodle in the lab uh, subtopic of the section of the Moodle show. Do go, have a look at it, retry it on your own, and then I will give you about two to three exercises next week. Uh, by the way, uh, I, don't, I have not put in any questions on GAN chart in the mid-semester exam, okay? This is for your project basis only. Okay, but do note this is in your final exams, game charts definitely would be tested. All right, then, thank you very much. This is where I will conclude the class for our tutorial and lab. If you have any questions, feel free to hover back through email or a message on Moodle. Till then, stay care, take care, stay safe. Please make sure to keep up with your revisions and all the assessments. I'll see you in next week's class whereby I will be conducting revision. Thank you, everyone.